All right, everybody, how are you? My name is Prophet Kali. Obviously, you should know that. If you don't know, I don't know why you're here, but who knows? Maybe you have a friend or a friend of a friend that said, hey, I took some classes with this really cool Canadian professor. His name's Prophet Kali. So go watch one of his interviews with one of his students. Who knows? I'm not too sure how people find this stuff. But today you're lucky because I got another interview with one of my fabulous students. I have an interview with Javier from Bogota. Javier, how are you? <laughs> the thing is, I'm not Javier, I'm Sergio. Oh, no, I, actually, no, actually, no, no, I want, <laughs> actually, oh, yeah, I, I want, yeah, I want to talk about this. Okay, so, that's it. so this is, no, this is really funny because this is Sergio. So, but Sergio took my classes, I don't know, how many years, was it one year or two years? How long, Sergio? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, two years. Yeah, two years. Okay. So, so Sergio took my classes for two years. And then after he stopped taking my classes, he recommended me to one of his friends. And his friend's name is Javier. And for me, it was a really funny one. Javier started my class. It's kind of a big story because there's a few things. Another thing is, if you want, you can watch the interview I did with uh, Sergio's sister, Monica. So Monica and Sergio are brother sisters. They're, they're twins. But they kind of look like each other, but they don't really look like each other. If you saw them in the street, you might not really know that they're twins. But Sergio's friend, Javier... If you saw Javier and Sergio, their faces, I'm not too sure. Maybe if I saw them in real life, I'd be like, oh, no, they look completely different. But when you look at their faces on our virtual class, like the <laughs> classes I do, they look incredibly similar. So the first class that Javier took, I think I called them Sergio for the first two classes because they looked very similar. They had a similar beard. They had you know similar facial composition. They had similar hair. Everything <laughs> looked similar. So when Javier started, I said, Sergio, uh, how are you? And he's like, no, my name's not Sergio. It's Javier. Like, oh. <laughs> so, so now, so Sergio, he hasn't taken my classes, I think, for about one year. And Javier, his friend, his co-worker, uh, has taken class with me for one year. So now when I see Sergio, I automatically think Javier. So Sergio, I know you're Sergio, but yes, I might say Javier every once in a while. And if anybody's watching this and you're wondering why you're calling him Javier, it's because one of his friends is... <laughs> His name is Javier, and he's taking my classes, and they look like twins for me. I'm not too sure. In real life, do you guys look similar? I don't know, like body-wise, do you guys look similar? Or is one shorter, one taller? Or you guys look very different when you get see each other in real life? But the thing is, you're the first person that told me that. I mean, but we are, the, I'm taller than him. I'm not. Okay, yeah. But yeah, but, but kind of closer friends, so probably mm -hmm. we have the same manners. <laughs> well, actually that's the other thing too is like the way they speak spanish well because they're both from bogota so they both even in english when they speak english i guess they have that i guess we'll say the bogota twang so they have that bogota spanish accent which it really isn't a, a very noticeable accent but still you listen to them speak and they speak very similarly as well they both i'm pretty sure when they speak in spanish they speak very similarly as well just with the bogota accent so yeah i think for me it's the accent javier says they don't look 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 like each other uh I don't know how to say that looks wise, but I don't know. Maybe I'll put when I edit this video, I'm going to put a picture of Javier and you guys decide if you think they look similar or not. For me, they look very similar. <laughs> For sure. All right. So anyway, sir, heal my apologies. I already called nah, him Javier. No worries. I, I told myself before the interview, okay, don't call him Javier because you're going to get confused, but uh, I already screwed up. So anyways, we got uh, Sergio here. So you guys now know I wanted to explain that to you guys, but it kind of happened accidentally. So yes. So uh, Sergio found my classes because his sister took my classes before mm -hmm. uh, he took my classes. So first his sister said, hey, Sergio, my brother, uh, got this professor from Canada. Mm -hmm. He knows a lot about Bogota, knows a lot about Colombians. You might like him. So I started taking classes. And then afterwards, Sergio recommended me to his friend Javier. But I guess before I kind of talk about all the connections, even though I kind of already did it, uh, I don't know, uh, Sergio, maybe introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, who are you? Where are you from? Well, we know you're from Bogota, but yeah, no. Uh, how would you describe yourself in your own words? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Kai, for the invitation. As you said, I'm Sergio, Sergio Bernal. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. And, uh, and currently, I, I work from Adidas, Colombia. Actually, Adidas Global as a service manager. But I am graphic designer as a profession, so it's a long story. Probably we developed into this interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we'll start with that because, yeah. Actually, I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe you told me, or maybe you never really told me. I don't know. 
because I think actually when you're taking class with me, did you have a different job or the same job? I, I can't remember. Uh, I I was kind of a tech lead in my previous job. Yeah. So this one, the, the function are really similar, but the, okay. and the position here is service manager. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so maybe that's why. Because yeah, I think you told me about your other job and and then you got a new job now with, with Adidas. So. Yeah. So that, what does a service manager do? I'm not too sure. Like, do you talk to customers? Do you deal with uh, business contacts? Or what's what's your main responsibilities? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm a part of global team. My okay. my my team is uh, based on Alemania, and the other ones in India. Mm -hmm. I'm the okay. only guy here in Latin America for this team. Well, and uh, awesome. yeah, it's a uh, infrastructure things, cloud services. Okay. Uh, internal services in Adidas. So, oh, so we look for this, all this infrastructure, uh, maintenance, support, mm -hmm. operating system. It's, I mean, it's a, a really, really little or small view that I, that I, saw, that I told yeah. you, but, but yeah, it's, it's kind of that. It's, it's, it's a little bit complex. Uh, yeah, sure. and yeah, and we talk with different uh, uh, product owners in the company, and we have our uh, our vendor, so we need to manage them. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's a global operation, so it's okay. it's, it's it's biggest, it's bigger than you think. Yeah, well, I, well it's Adidas, so I'm, I imagine Adidas is one of the biggest companies in the world, so it, it makes sense. Uh, but it kind of sounds like basically just make sure that the technology, more or less, in the back end of the company is working is that in like in i don't know short short words uh sh long story short is that what you got kind of do yeah lo lo long story short infrastructure yeah. uh operating systems and virtual machines service mm -hmm. uh, servers global service mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's it that's mm -hmm. actually and so now it kind of makes sense how you know Javier. So I'm guessing that you know Javier because he's also a graphic designer. Is that where you guys met? Was it in school? Uh no. I I knew him in, in Bavaria. Bavaria. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, that's because that's I where you're Javier. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But because you guys you because you guys both because so you studied graphic design and he also studied graphic design. But yeah, you didn't study graphic design at the same time. No, no, no. No, actually we, we went to a different school. Uh okay. But the thing is, I, I I knew Javier because he interviewed me to the job. So oh really? Okay. Yeah. So well, I don't yeah, know. Was he, he your was was his job only to only to interview you, or was he your boss while you were at Bavaria? No, the thing is, uh, when I when I went to Bavaria, Javier was promoted. Okay. To go to another con to place to okay. to give services to another country, so he needed mm -hmm. to find another one to replace him. So okay. I show up. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I, so in a way, he interviewed you to take over his position. Is that kind of how it worked? Exactly. Ah, okay. All right. All right. I mean, the, interesting. I had to, uh, all the process had a pre-interview or something like that, yeah. but the, the technical one was with Javier. Ah, okay. All right. Now, you know, one aspect of Latin American culture, which I find, I don't know, interesting. Yeah, I'm going to say interesting. Uh, is that obviously co-workers are very close they're very good friends so I don't know so with you and Javier like, did you guys after the interview did you come, become friends or did you just kind of have contact information and you know just whenever there was an opportunity or whenever you needed to help with something you would just send them a message or was it one of those typical Latin American work friendships where you know Fridays you'd go for beers and hang out yeah 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 I I I, I I really start a, a a really good relationship with, with with him. I mean, we start we have similar uh, hobbies or something like that. So okay. after beside of work, we start to work uh, to talk every day about different things about go for a beer. I mean, and we work in a in a beer company. It was really easy to say, mm -hmm. hey, go for a beer and, 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 <laughs> and talk about something, and that's yeah, really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, but we are really close friends right now. Actually, okay. Actually, yeah. I. I I met I met with him uh, on Friday, so okay, know. all right, all right. So you guys keep in touch. Yeah, well, I remember Javier yeah. told me that you were his friend, but of course, you know, for Latinos, a friend could be anything. It could be like, oh, I just met a guy. <laughs> you know, I, I go to Cartagena and ev I'm everybody's friend. They say, oh, amigo, amigo, yeah, yeah. mono, mono, amigo, amigo. Yeah, so you know, in Colombia, everybody's your friend. Okay, but yeah, so he's actually a, a good friend of yours. Okay, yeah. well, now I know. I never really asked him how close you guys were. All right, well, at Bavaria. 
like I think I kind of know, but you know, maybe for somebody watching, I think Bavaria. So it's a really big. Is it an alcohol company or a beer company, or is it beer company? Beer sure. company. And what what are some of the brands that they own? I think they own a few Colombian beers, and they also own some international beers, right? Yeah, for sure. The thing is, um, Bavaria. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a Colombian company, right? Okay. Okay. So okay. we have we have different brands: Aguila, Poker, Club Colombia. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is the own of Bavaria was owned by a, a, the biggest company, the beer company in the world, called okay. Anelser Busch in Bev. So okay. they have a, a Stellar, Tua, Budweiser, Corona, mm -hmm. okay. a, a lot of brands around the world. So it's the yeah. biggest, biggest beer company in the world. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's pretty big. And well, so it's a beer company. Now, obviously, when you work at a big company, sometimes there's perks. There's benefits. So it's a beer company. Did you guys get free beer? Was it a bar at work or something like that? Or uh, no, no, no good perks just because you worked at a beer company? No, actually, they 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 have really good perks when I was there. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them is uh, a free beer. I mean, we have a platform when you can order a a twenty four pack of beer. Uh, okay. For, for free. Yeah. In mo like, in monthly. So yeah, monthly. once like once a month you could order twenty four beers, or was it? You know, like once a week or every day, you could get twenty-four beers. No, just monthly. So just once. Okay. Yeah, once month. But the mm -hmm. thing is, I mean, the company has a lot of uh, events. So yeah, per week we have a new release or something like that. So okay. we have beer in our spots. Uh, so that was that was really cool. Ah, uh, okay. So like after releasing a new uh, new alcohol in Colombia, you guys get free samples. Exactly. Or or even, I don't know, I'm guessing if they have like some sort of event in the city that you guys get free tickets and you guys can go to the event, some, stuff like that. Or uh, mostly just free alcohol. Yeah, in some, no, in some, in some of them. For example, uh, Aguila was the sponsor of the Barranquilla's Carnival. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so the brand uh, made a party in the building with this, with oh, this okay. topic. So it was really yeah, yeah. awesome. And yeah, for mm -hmm. that, for so many events, we have uh, free tickets. You know, of them mm -hmm. was by sorted. So, mm -hmm. but it's 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 really cool. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so, seems pretty good. So it seems like uh, Javier some has some good jobs. Well, now you work for Adidas. So do you guys do you have getting any perks with Adidas? I think well, you told me before we started that you I think you get a uh, free gym gym membership at Body Tech. So you got that. Mm -hmm. but I don't know. Do you get free shoes or free clothing for working at Adidas or discounts or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have um, a lot of perks in, in Adidas. I mean, uh -huh. this kind of uh, uh, hybrid remote work, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. The gym that I mentioned you, obviously, mm -hmm. I have a, a really great discount in Adidas. Mm -hmm. uh, clothes, yeah. events, uh, sports, uh, events, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And they really like you to, to, you to do a sport. So it's okay. awesome because... They support you in really in really a lot of fields in running, mm -hmm. basketball, football because it's called football. Soccer is a green word. Uh, I I taught <laughs> I taught you American English. You gotta you gotta yeah. say soccer. <laughs> <laughs> right. That sounds pretty good though. Well, okay. Actually, I, I met you and I met your sister in Bogota. Well, I, think, well, I met you once, and I met I think I've seen I've seen your sister maybe three times. You guys are very nice, and your family is very nice. Uh, I think I remember when I met Monica in person. I think she was wearing Adidas, but was Monica wearing Adidas because you worked for Adidas or because she likes Adidas? Uh, I think both. Okay. But no, when, when when we met, I was in Bavaria. I yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think you're working at Adidas yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but, the, thing I, but the thing yeah. I had, I had friends uh, working there, so they oh, okay. discount coupons, something like that. But um, before before I joined to the company, I uh, really, really, really brand lover of Adidas. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah. Well, I think I think for this, I'm not much of a soccer fan. I can watch it, but you're a much bigger soccer fan than, than I am. You're a big supporter of Millonarios in in Bogota, yeah. uh, and the Selección. I'm pretty sure you support the La, La Selección, as Colombians like to say. Uh, but yeah, I think Adidas is when it comes to soccer, it's the biggest brand for soccer. Am I correct, or is it kind of yeah. equal between Adidas and Nike? For me, it seems like Adidas is number one for soccer, and then it's kind of Nike number two, or Puma is number two. I'm not too sure who's number two. Hmm. It's, uh, it's a tough question. It's really difficult to say because I mean, yeah. in in the, in the soccer field, I mean, Adidas has uh, three teams sponsored, Nike okay. once, 
-hmm. the other the other teams here in Colombia, I mean, they, they don't have enough budget to do that, so they have a local okay. brand. So yeah. I mean, it's not like in Europe that they fought the shoulder by shoulder in, in C yeah, yeah. who is the better one. I mean, yeah, in yeah, Colombia, yeah. Adidas is, is extremely, extremely strong. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, yeah. in Latin America. It's, it's yeah, I would say. Uh, uh, for me, I, well, you might know more about this. I'm just curious. Because for me, it's, it kind of seems like it's because of Messi in Argentina. Like he's, you know, Adidas is the number one yeah, he's, person. He's a player. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like most Latinos like Messi. And, you know, not all Latinos like Argentinians, but most Latinos do like Messi. So I don't know. I just, I was, I was wondered if that was the reason or if there was another reason why Adidas was number one. Who knows? All right. So yeah, work for Adidas. How long have you been working for Adidas? Because I know you stopped taking the class with me and then you, you were still working for Bavaria. And then it seems like- But I was in job. that process. Did you remember that I told you that I have- Oh, because yeah, I think you stopped taking classes because you yeah, said yeah, you're, yeah. you're getting a new job, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm working okay. on having the process finishing my old work. So I need okay, to- yeah. And I need to, to times to uh, mm -hmm. prepare the interviews and all the process because it, it was long. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, 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 yeah. I was mm -hmm. for a year. It's September. It's, it's it? March, probably year and a half. Time. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's been a while. All right. Uh, I was have another question about your job. I can't remember. Well, actually, Javier was giving lots of papaya. He said his name. He said his last name, and he said he gets lots of perks from Adidas. So hopefully, have. <laughs> No, I have here, Sergio. You see, you know, we're starting with the have you know. So hopefully, Sergio. So hopefully, Sergio, you don't uh, you don't have any problems with Brianes or the the moto ladrones in Bogota. <laughs> they're, they're learning English just so they can find out. Mm, hey, Prof. Cal, he's doing interviews with people in Bogota that might have some money. We're gonna find out where they live and and rob them. I don't, right. know. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know. I hope not either. I I don't think it will happen, but it'd be it break my heart if I. Seen an RSA any or catacode. A man was robbed today. They found his information on a profit Kyle interview on, on YouTube. <laughs> That'd be bad. So, yeah, we're not going to say where you live in Bogota. We won't give your address information or anything. Yeah, like that. for sure. For sure. That's fair enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess we can start talking about uh, you learning English. I'm guessing it'd be similar to your sister, but let's talk about your own story. So, when I think. Like most Colombians, did you start learning English when you were in, uh, you know, elementary school or high school? Yeah, uh, but I mean, I I I studied in um, over I I'm not sure governmental or district uh, school. So, so is that like is that a good school or a bad school? It kind of sounds like a public school, so like a regular yeah, school in Colombia. Yeah, it's a public school. So the mm -hmm. thing is, uh, when I started, I mean, mm -hmm. I I don't know nowadays how it is, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They saw some levels of, of English, but that is all the courses are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, to be verb, uh, past <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. do you like soccer? Do you like badminton? Yes, I do. B I N G O, B I N G O. So, oh, this, really? Oh, that's a good, it's a good classic song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, at, least, at least they got that song because that's a very popular song, even for gringos. Yeah, <laughs> Bingo was his name. Oh, yeah, B -I -N -G -O. yeah for sure. So the thing is that the the level in the, in those times um, wasn't really cool. I mean, it wasn't yeah. really good, and the and the school doesn't uh, didn't focus on this on this on this kind of languages. So mm. the thing is, yeah, we saw it, but it's extremely basic. I mean, mm. the university, I saw I saw it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, the university told you that you just need two levels of English to mm. pass and. And it's extremely easy. I mean, a lot of people mm -hmm. get got this grade, but yeah, they don't even know anything about English. Oh, yes. and uh, I know what you mean. I I taught in uh, Columbia University, so yeah, and there's some pretty easy English levels, that's for sure. All right, but is that when you when did so when did you really start learning English? Because it sounds like you graduate from high school, and mm -hmm. yeah, your English level was just like most Colombians is more or less zero yeah. and you had a little bit but not too much so like did you start taking it seriously in high school or i don't know were you on your on the internet a lot playing video games and you started picking up english quite a bit so yeah when did you really start to pick it up yeah the thing is um uh, when i was working to avianca mm -hmm. uh, they uh they start to tell us that probably we can have some projects in english right 
Okay. So the thing is, I I lost an opportunity. Okay. Uh, for them speak speak English fluently. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the thing is, I I start thinking that if I if I really want a better job, I need to start to study mm -hmm. English. I mean, I'm not. I wasn't bad at English at all. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't uh, say hi. I probably write uh, some emails. Yeah. Uh, with the translator help, but. I can, yeah, I, I, yeah, I figured it out. The thing, the thing is, when we to when when I needed to speak fluently, mm -hmm. it cost me a lot because I mean, of all the Latin American thought because it's I'm really shy. Mm -hmm. They laugh at me, so mm -hmm. they start to making jokes of me. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. the thing. So yeah. When I was there in Avianca, uh, a friend of a friend of mine started studying in the National University. Okay, but well, like started studying English at the yeah. national at National, or was he like studying something else already, and that was one of the requirements? No, they start they they start uh, in a uh, free courses. I mean, okay, uh, yeah. it's not necessary to be studying uh, to study in the, in the university to get access to these courses. Okay, so yeah, so, yeah, so uh, we pay for them. And mm -hmm. we start to go after work to go mm -hmm. to National University. It was really close. I mean, yeah. five minutes in uh, Transmillennial or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, I start uh, studying English there in um, 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the last quarter of 2018, I start to, to, okay. to study there. I started yeah. to study there. Uh, -huh. uh yeah actually but it was really it was really cool i mean uh but the thing is uh like in every colombian institute it's uh just uh to the book i mean just like, 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 the pasting okay. uh, -huh. uh fill the empty blank spaces so mm -hmm. and that's it but i mean and i really like it i i didn't yeah. i don't know if any other institute they do that but the thing is uh you present an exam, okay, just to see how your level is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, the, the, the before or after you finish the the course? No, before. Okay. All right. Well, so like you do uh, evaluation test to see which level you're in, and then you basically yeah. enter your level. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, um, I didn't want to present it. I mean, I'm gonna start from the scratch because oh, probably, really? yeah, okay. because I probably. Yeah, there are so many so two basic things, but probably I didn't know them. So yeah. the thing mm -hmm. is, yeah, uh, I, I don't mind to start again. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a thing, you know? So the thing, uh, uh, yeah, I start from the beginning, B-I-N-G-O again. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're playing lottery. So but, but that's cool, I mean. Yeah. So, but the thing is... Uh, we were, uh, there were 20 of us in the room. So mm -hmm. it was really cool because we, we speak a lot. So that, okay. uh, that, that was my, my, my objective to get, to get there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's speaking, it's speaking, it's speaking, it's speaking, and, uh, and fearless. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you didn't care what people thought. You were going to be speaking English yeah, no matter for what. Sure. Yeah. For, mm -hmm. We are here. All of all of the, all of all of all of them, they are here for the same reason to me. So mm -hmm. the thing is, we are studying. So that's really cool. And I spent there. I took, I think, uh, ten levels there. Okay, is it like one level per month? Is that how it works? Uh no, two months. Two months, okay. Two months per level, yeah. All right. So, uh, but then in the fucking twenty twenty, this yeah. pandemic started. So. Yeah, yeah. The university wasn't ready to attend virtual classes, so the oh, okay. thing is, was really, 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 really tough because twenty guys in a in a Google Meet room mm -hmm. talking yeah. and talking and and do the exercise from the book, so it was really difficult. It's it's not. Yeah, yeah the classes uh, weren't planned to be virtual, so okay, it was really uncomfortable to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I can imagine. Well, actually, when you said there was twenty students, I'm just I'm curious. I guess as an English teacher, uh, trying mm -hmm. to understand Latinos. So because you said 
20, yeah, 20 students in the classes. Mm -hmm. And you kind of said it in a way like, oh, it was a pretty small class. I, I don't know for Colombians is, is 20 students a lot in a class or is it a little in a class? It depends. If, okay. you, if, 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 you, if you study in a public school, mm -hmm. it's a really small room because, yeah. <laughs> because I mean, in my, in my school room, we are 43 guys. Yeah, yeah. So, but if you, but if someone were to private the school, probably yeah. it's a lot because some of them mm -hmm. take classes by other five guys or something. Yeah. Like that. Okay. But yeah, but I mean, it's kind of average could be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was it was cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, I don't know because I think yeah, National is. It has a lot of respect in Colombia. It seems like a good institute. When I talk to, well, it seems like especially for. Colombians who don't come from rich families, usually Nacional is uh, one of the best ways to get ahead in Colombia, whether it's um, studying English or studying a bachelor's in something. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, were, were teachers pretty good at Nacional when you when you were taking the classes? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I think they, they were really good. Uh, most of them are uh, philologists. So... Oh, okay, so like they, they study the, you know, study languages right yeah for sure so i mean it's 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 really good and 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 most of them have graduated from from the university from the national university mm -hmm. so i mean i think they 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 were really really cool really cool mm -hmm. teachers yeah so yeah they had a lot of knowledge so it wasn't like <laughs> they're giving you bad information they gave you the best information <laughs> they could i mean you know sometimes you see videos on social media what i do and you think oh this this person doesn't know much about English, but yeah, I'm guessing they study phil. Well, actually, I don't even know how to say it in English very good. Phil, 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 phil philology. Philologists. Yeah, you know how to say it better than I do. I don't really like the word. In English. <laughs> I don't like the word in English or in Spanish, but yeah, if they study that, they should know uh, about the language at least. All right. So basically, the pandemic ruined your plans. What? Well, how many levels can you take at Nacional if you want to do it like you were doing? Is uh, twenty levels, twelve levels? Okay. 12, so you're only 12. missing two levels to basically finish everything. Yeah. 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 For sure. But I mean, um, I don't really care if I get a certification or not. The thing I mean, yeah. I'm speaking in English. I don't need yeah. in any in any interview, in any meeting. Hey, my my English certification. Well, that, yeah, that's what I think too. People yeah. ask me about a certificate, and you know, I guess I I know for myself, and I know for other people that sell English courses, they always have to say, "Oh, yes, we give you a certificate when once you complete." And yeah, yeah, I have the same opinion as you. You either speak English or you don't speak English. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, what's, what's this? What's the certificate going to do when you're in a job interview? It's not going to help you anyway. You're going to say, uh, <laughs> "Oh, si, 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 yo hablo, yo hablo inglés." Es prueba. Well, say something English for me. No, oh, no, no, no. Yo, yo hablo inglés. Yo hablo inglés porque tengo un certificado. No, you yeah. gotta, you gotta speak English. Yeah. So for you, you didn't really care about any certificates. Obviously, you were going to do all 12 levels if you could, but you didn't really care about getting any certificate at the very end. Yeah, for sure. Pro probably um, I finished it, but the thing is the pandemic and the video class yeah. classes really, really suck. Because mm -hmm. I mean, no, because of the teacher uh, were bad yeah. or something like that. Is the methodology is not? It's like yeah. the the way the way they taught wasn't meant to be taught in virtual classes, more or less. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So mm -hmm. for that reason, I talked with my sister with Monica. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh yeah, and Monica recommended you. Actually, mm -hmm. they told me, yeah, but I'm taking classes with Kyle, and it's mm -hmm. via Zoom, and it's really cool because the classes are mm -hmm. are planned for that. Yeah. And it's uh, just uh, eight eight guys, I think, is the maximum group. Well, nine. Yeah. Eight. Okay, eight, nine, yeah. but yeah. Well, yeah, but I guess, yeah, besides yourself, then yeah, be eight other people. Yeah, exactly. Besides, besides me, yeah. So, mm -hmm. sounds good to me. And then I think I take the the open day, the open classes that you have. One oh, yeah, because I, I think at that time I was doing the... The, the test classes so yeah, yeah i think yeah, i remember your sister told me oh yeah so yeah for sure it's before you yeah. became famous so <laughs> yeah i mean uh, that's, that's not the reason <laughs> that's not the reason i stopped doing test classes actually i might start doing test classes again because yeah there are people like sergio the the reason they took the classes was because they took the test class first and like actually somebody today was asking me if i do test classes and i said oh, right now i don't do it but yeah, I think, you know, yeah, people feel more comfortable if they can test something out before they before they do it. Was that the same case for you? Like your sister told you about the classes, you know, 
okay, it's my sister. I, I trust her, I'm guessing. But uh, I'm not fully decided yet. I'd rather take a test class before I, mm, you know, give him my money and start taking classes. Was was that your mentality? Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I mean, if Monica told me that, that hey, he opened a free class, go ahead. Yeah, why not? I mean, yeah. probably, if, probably if you if you didn't have it, probably I'd take the course as well. But yeah, but yeah. But if if it exists, why you don't take it? Yeah, no. <laughs> just to be on the safe side, just to make sure that uh, you, you like what I teach. All right, makes sense. Yeah, so you know, a lot of people they find me on social media, but yeah, your case is because of your sister that that she found me. Uh, yeah, question I usually ask, well, because because your sister told me a lot, so maybe before you, well, but you also took the test classes, so maybe before the test class, so between your sister telling me about how I taught, and before taking the test class. Mm-hmm. Or if you want, maybe even after taking the test class, uh, I don't know. What, what did you expect from the classes? Like, did you expect a, a certain thing to happen? Do you expect me to teach in a certain way? What were your expectations before you had your first class or your first test class? All my expectation was uh, where uh, be more confident. Actually, I mean, it's yeah. my my main objective because mm-hmm. what happened in your classroom? I mean. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, everyone is there to learn about it. Yeah, yeah, and the um, and the speed that uh, that we talk is extremely slow, and mm-hmm. it's really it's it's easier to understand them, to understand mm-hmm. each other because yeah, we are in the same plan. Yeah, we have the we yeah. have the same mindset. Okay. But but uh, when I go to another scenarios, I mean, if if I I don't know if something in the airport asked me for something in English, and probably I. I, I couldn't understand him all the time here. So yeah, yeah I probably I, I I'd be panic because I mean yeah. I, I'm a study, but I can I can express myself. So yeah, yeah. My main objective, be more confident. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm in Argentina right now. And I think one yeah, one thing I think most Latinos will say is about Argentinians is that they're extremely confident people. And yeah, I find in Argentina, yeah, the English level is a little bit higher, but at the same time, so yeah, they Argentinians have no problem speaking English. Like if as soon as they notice that you're a foreigner, they'll be like, oh, like for example, I think yesterday, I can't remember what happened. Oh yeah. Yesterday I went to a place that had good burgers, good hamburgers. I wanted to test it out. And you know, when you go to the burger places in Colombia or in Argentina, they'll give you the receipt and they'll say, okay, tu numero es, you know, 32. Yeah. So yeah, she said, oh, tu numero es, I thought I heard 32. So I said, oh, 32. And I guess she, because of how I looked or because of the way I spoke Spanish or maybe both, I'm not too sure. She she knew that as a foreigner. So she's like, oh, 22. And I was like, 22. So like, yeah, I, I speak Spanish. You don't have to speak English. <laughs> but yeah, so Argentinians have no problem speaking English. But I find that even though they, they don't have problems speaking English, it's not as though their English is spectacular. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, uh, but you know, when you talk to Mexicans or Colombians, that's one thing I find with you guys is that you guys are very, uh, very oh, self-conscious, very worried. Uh, you guys have a low confidence in your English. Yeah, I'll get students, well, Venezuelans, Colombians, Mexicans. They'll speak really good English for me. But yeah, they'll say the same thing that you say. It's like I, I don't really, I don't really feel confident in my English. I feel like they're, they're thinking bad about me when I speak English. Uh, but yeah, you know. I, in Argentina, I'll get people speaking English with me, and I think, man, my students speak way better English than you guys. <laughs> talk to an Argentine and say, oh, yes, oh, yes, I speak a perfect, a perfect English. And, eh, I don't know. I think my students speak better English than you. Yeah. But, yeah, so I think a lot of students enter my class because they want to get more confidence. So, yeah, so for you, it wasn't really like anything in particular. It wasn't really listening. It wasn't really speaking. It wasn't really pronunciation. For you, you just want to get more confident uh, you want to think quicker in English. You just mm-hmm. want that confidence, more or less. I think uh, a little part of shift work. I mean, okay. I really like to improve my listening, my speaking. Yeah. At, yeah. What's, the, what, what's the thing? Uh, when I start work thinking English in my previous job in Bavaria, mm-hmm. I needed to talk with people in India. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. it's extremely difficult to understand them. I mean, the first meeting that we that that I had with them, mm-hmm. I don't understand anything. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. it was really frustrated. But a lot of people told me on um, native speakers or people with a really good level of English told me, no worries, it's, nor- it's normal. It's mm-hmm. normal to feel confused because it's really a difficult accent. So just, yeah. just train your ears. Train your ears, train your listening. And in uh, one or two weeks uh, with a daily meeting with them, you mm-hmm. are going to understand it. So that's, yeah, and, 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 and that's what happened. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, in two weeks probably, uh, at least I understand the 60 or 70% of the meeting. <laughs> you know, uh, after a month, I uh, completely understand them. So it was really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. So anybody's watching this because I get that comment all the time from students, people on social media. It's like, I got I to gotta talk to people from India for work and I don't understand anything. And I, I tell them it's even for us, even for Canadians mm-hmm. or Americans, we don't really understand them very well either. A lot of them work uh, as customer service agents for mm-hmm. banks or for cell phone companies in Canada. So yeah. when I was growing up, my mom, whenever she would have to phone, she'd always have to talk to an Indian. <laughs> I just remember my mom, my mom getting so angry because she, she didn't understand anything. Can you repeat? I did not understand what you said. And then they were like, oh, do, 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 do. like <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. And yeah, she would always get really mad that she'd have to speak to somebody from India. So even for us, it's really difficult to understand them. And I yeah. completely know how you feel because the same thing was, you know, somebody who no Spanish. For example, when I go from Colombia to Argentina, yeah, it takes me about two weeks to kind of switch my ear to listening to Argentine and mm-hmm. Argentinians because their pronunciation uh, is a little bit different. And of course, the vocabulary is a little bit different as well. So yeah, it's, it's a big problem. Actually, because you started at Nacional when you were working at Avianca, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So you're working at Avianca and then you switched jobs and your next job was at Bavaria? Bavaria, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, and before Avianca, or were you uh, were you in university? Was Avianca your first job after university? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Before Avianca, I worked in a digital agency as a as a graphic designer of this social media post, social okay. media advertising, all this, all this uh, uh, web page development. Yeah, yeah, all this kind of that you do in an agency as a designer slash developer. Yeah. A jack of all trades. So yeah, you went from there to Avianca to Bavaria, and now you're in Adidas. Adidas, yeah. All right, good. All right, so your biggest thing when you started the classes was you just want to get uh, more confidence. Um, now, when you started taking the classes, uh, was there was there anything in particular that surprised you? Any any big surprises, or did was everything exactly how you expected? Uh no, actually, I have. Uh the idea that not expect nothing yeah, like <laughs> when, when i went when i, when I was open something. mind yeah for sure so let's see what happened but uh i we don't have bad expectation or low expectation about it i think uh let's see what happened yeah uh i'm probably gonna see uh, the under the through the road we see what happened so it was really cool i mean uh the thing that i really like it that i enjoyed in your classes is what we are people from around the globe and you know, okay. I mean, people in the United States, people in Paraguay, I think the oh, only yeah, yeah, person yeah. that I met from Paraguay is in your classes. <laughs> <laughs> Paraguay, I, I, yeah, yeah. Bolivia, I, 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 Chile. So it's extremely awesome, but, but it's a really good way to train your ears. I mean, mm-hmm. at, I mean, every, everyone there uh, speaks Spanish, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they, but we have stuff really, really different. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. If you try to translate in your head from Spanish to English, it's really different from Colombian mm-hmm. Spanish, from Chilean Spanish, from mm-hmm. Peruvian Spanish. It's extremely mm-hmm. different. So it was yeah. really cool. The accent was really different. Mm-hmm. The words doesn't mean the same in every country. So yeah. it's, a, it's it's a really good experience and, and, and that's uh, a big surprise for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just the people from different parts. Actually, I, I ask myself that sometimes is, you know, if... If I became a bigger institute and I had, you know, more students, would it be uh-huh. a good idea to split the students and, you know, Colombians have one class, Venezuelans have one class, Mexicans have one class. But for you, one of the biggest benefits were was having, yeah, students from different countries in one. Yeah, one, yeah, one yeah, class. for sure. Actually, uh, uh, sorry for, <laughs> for 
for for you that was it's a really bad idea. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah because the, the the this kind of multicultural experience it's it's extremely cool. I mean, you feel more international and more yeah. uh, talkative because you want to know yeah. a lot of things from yeah, the yeah. other guys. I mean, if you are if you are in a room with ten or twelve Colombians, I mean, it's the same people that you see every day and talk every day. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of boring. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 talking about the same topic. So yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. Okay, all right. So yeah, it's better to have a, a good mixture. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, for me, it's interesting because yeah, you get you get to learn different vocabulary. And like you said, there's lots of students are from the United States. Uh, so yeah, you get to meet, you know, Latinos that are living the real gringo experience and you can ask them exactly. questions about how life is in the United States. So yeah, okay. Well, yeah, well, that's good that you told me that. Yeah, I did. I, yeah, sometimes I think uh, it might be better if it's all Mexicans or but no, you say. Keep keep the mixture. Keep keep it yeah, mixed. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was the next question I have for you? Uh, oh yeah. So the base thing you wanted to prove was your your confidence, but I'm not too sure. You took classes. All right. How long did you take classes? Was it about what a year and a half or two years? A year and a half, I think. A year and a half. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Was there one thing that improved more than other things, or for you was it? All equal, you improved all aspects of your English. I improve a lot of things. Yeah. But one of the things that I really, really improved, it was my uh, my fluency, but uh -huh. with the slangs. I mean, uh, okay. with a kind of informal English because, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure, I we... I mean, I studied two years by the book, so I the the structure, uh -huh. the verb, yeah. So, but the thing is, uh, when I saw some series, I didn't understand a lot of things. So, mm -hmm. because yeah, there are a lot of slangs there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's one of the biggest things. Uh, I start to practicing. Uh, I mean, out of these books and try to use different scenarios like uh, music, uh, series, TV mm -hmm. show, your own story that you wrote. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. This use of this uh, slangs or uninformal language, mm -hmm. I think it's a really good idea. And, and that's yeah. the thing that I want to improve after I, uh, after I left uh, National University. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, yeah. I think in my mind, I said all the, all the formal way I did it. Mm -hmm. So I really want to start uh, in a kind of real field, in the real life, more mm -hmm. English, daily English. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I think it's one of the biggest improvement, improvements that I had yeah. with you. Yeah, so yeah, so I definitely, I definitely teach the, the real gringo English. <laughs> I, well, people, you know, when I do Instagram lives, people always ask me if there's a favorite, you know, slang word from a country. And I don't want to put you on the spot because sometimes people ask me, I'll, I'll say something like you said, like, oh, yeah, I learned lots of slang when I was living in Cartagena. And then somebody will say, oh, tell us what your favorite slang was. But then you put me on the spot and I think, okay, there was lots of slang, but I can't remember right now. But uh, I'm not too sure. Is there is there a certain slang that maybe you learned in class that you, you've you now implemented into your English that you didn't have before? Yeah, for sure. If, if you have been right now, I can I can list them. List them. I mean, I can, actually. You can, but you can't. Yeah, no, it's like, can. yeah, like, yeah, for me, that's the same thing with me. It's like people ask me, like, you know, what's the slang that you know from Mexico or from Colombia? And it's like, yeah. like, even exactly. actually yesterday, well, because yesterday I was thinking, okay, I got my interview with uh, Sergio, Sergio Bogota. And I was like, oh, man, it's been a while since I've been in Bogota. It's like, oh, like, oh yeah, Bogotanos, they say Vesi, Vecino. I was like, I'm trying to remember Vesis. all the things that, <laughs> that all, all the Bogotanos say. But yeah, yeah, sometimes you don't have that slang. You don't really use it until you're in like in the situation. And yeah, in that moment. Yeah, mind. for yeah. sure. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and feel really natural to say it. I mean, it's not for say that, you know. Yeah. You don't practice every day, but yeah, it's 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 kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what I like to hear. Well, you want to learn this more more real informal English, but I'm not too sure with the job right now. You have lots of meetings in English. Uh, do you have a chance to ever use that English? Because you know sometimes, well, like a big misconception among Latinos, and I think just mm -hmm. different cultures in Latino culture, it's really big. You have to speak the right way to show your your education, right? To show your your place in society, you know, mm -hmm. especially in countries like uh, Colombia and Mexico. 
Whereas in English, I, I always told you guys, yeah, we don't really have that when we're speaking. It's more when we're writing where we really kind of differentiate ourselves along class lines, I guess you would say. Uh, so I usually tell students that you don't, you don't need to worry too much about speaking formal English with gringos because when we're speaking, we speak more informal English. But I'm not too sure with your, with your job, with the meetings, do you, are you able to use any of the stuff you learned in class, the informal uh, English and the slang? Yeah, for sure. But I mean, I need to to use both, yeah. right? But the thing is, uh, probably in a meeting, in a in a coffee break or something like that, we use like a real people. I mean, I I I'm not gonna say uh, <laughs> after every meeting, hey, regards, hey, regards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I I look forward <laughs> to you. No, <laughs> bye, take care, have a great week, or something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. I I I'm not used completely the opposite side. I mean I I can I can say for uh, to someone hey so clear what up or something like that. Yeah yeah of course no but uh, hey but it's going that, mm -hmm. yeah and that and start a, a, a real conversation that with the thing is serious or something like that I we need to yeah. use the, the formal English but but the other scenarios of uh, talking by teams with some guy in Portland or something like that yeah, yeah. Hey, what up or, or use the contractions or something like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah I mean it mm -hmm. both are extremely useful but yeah. if you are in a really um i mean is is not a i don't know a hot topic in your job it's an extremely urgent thing or priority you can relax and use an a, 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 a informal english mm -hmm. without hesitate yeah. i mean uh, the company may make a lot of uh meetings uh yeah for example to bogota People for Portland, for Germany, for India come here, and we have happy hours. I mean, or go to lunch with the guest or something like that. And mm -hmm. we're gonna start to working. Hey, how are you? Can I <laughs> ask you something? Uh, sorry yeah. for bothering you. Ah, yeah. that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that because your your job is mostly remote now. I, yeah. Before we did the interview, you told me that I think you only have to go to the office as once a week or once a month. Uh, once a month. Once, uh, one, yes, week, one, one week per month, I mean. Oh, what? Oh, you have to be in the office one. Uh, like, so do you have to spend the entire week in the yeah. office? Or is it like you can split up like one day here, one day there, until you get one week total? No, uh, in a whole week in the office. In a whole I mean, week, okay. That's the idea to... I, I work with a lot of people, but the idea is in yeah. this week, uh, mm -hmm. everyone uh, uh, has a space in their agenda and go to mm -hmm. the office and, mm -hmm. and, and, and share between each other so mm -hmm. the idea is to spend all the week there mm -hmm. and because yeah you talked about why well, i'm curious about remote work i guess i i have a remote job but i don't really work with anybody i don't i don't know what the life is like so because <laughs> you said you can use your informal english when you're, you're when you're at lunch break so but yeah when you're at home working at home like do you is it still like a lunch break where you talk to your other uh, co-workers or mm. when you say lunch break, it's normally when you're, you know, that one week at the headquarters and you go out for lunch with whoever's in the building at that time. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's when I, when I go there, but the thing is um, I have some meetings in my, in, in my mornings are really busy because yeah. uh, as, as I mentioned before, my team is in Germany, it's located okay. in Germany. And yeah. some of them are in India. So yeah. when I when, when I start my day, they are finishing. So yeah. so we have a lot of meetings in the morning with them. But yeah, some of some of uh, meetings are the, with there are respective meetings or something like that. Just yeah. to yeah, just to be clear what you want and mm -hmm. what you want to achieve in this next month or quarter or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, can you send me in a, I mean, you know me. I mean, I, I can be serious for a long time. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so probably use my informal language in, in, in some meetings, even if yeah. it's a serious one. But yeah, it's okay. I mean, I yeah. think it's a kind of my personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Sergio likes to laugh. laugh. That's one thing about Sergio. He's, he's always laughing. He's like... <laughs> I know. He, I, know. <laughs> I, I would be surprised if in the future, or maybe in the past, somebody says, Sergio, are you, are you smoking marijuana? You, you're always laughing at a lot of stuff. So, you know, yeah, <laughs> Sergio likes to laugh a lot. Well, uh, Colombians are also happy people. So who knows? Maybe that's it as well. But even for Colombian standards, Sergio is a very happy guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 for especially, sure. Especially, especially talking about soccer. If you talk about soccer with Sergio, he, he gets really, really happy. Uh, well, okay. now you work with so you work with Germans, you work with Indians, uh, you work with. I think it sounds like some people from the United States as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm just curious. You know, working with different cultures, have have you noticed differences between the you know the different cultures, like how the how the Germans I don't know, speak sure. their attitudes and the Indians' attitudes and the Americans' attitudes? Have you noticed anything in particular? Yeah, for sure. Uh, actually, with the German people, I'm extremely surprised because they are really, really organized with their things. Yeah. But not not at the point to be a little cozy or something like that. No, yeah. they are extremely organized, and it's mm-hmm. really cool because in Latin America, we, <laughs> use, we used to work for long hours. If the client uh, call you at eleven p.m. and need something yeah. urgent for tomorrow, oh yeah, for sure, yeah, no worries, I take it. My German boss, one 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 occasion, I told him, "Hey, yeah. uh, my hey, that department called me to need this kind of things urgent. Mm-hmm. So, what should I do?" Something like that. Is is not urgent? Mm-hmm. No, the company is on fire or something like that? Mm-hmm. No. Okay, yeah. so tomorrow we'll check. Mm-hmm. No worries, it's not yeah. mandatory. I mean, if the company is losing money, that, that case is exist. If the company yeah. is losing money or something like that, or something extremely urgent in any warehouse or something like that, yeah, mm-hmm. we need to pay attention. But the other thing is not as urgent as they as they talk. So yeah. I think that's uh, obviously, for me, Northern Europeans and Eastern Europeans and Southern Europeans are very different from each other. But it does seem like a very European attitude. Europeans, like if it's not work hours, well, then you know, leave them alone. Uh, I think for Canadians and Americans too. But Europeans are very famous for, you no, know, they have two months of vacation and you know they only work four days per week. And yeah, when it's not work hours, they're not working. They're drinking wine, drinking beer, or they're just relaxing there. They're not thinking about work at all. All right. So yeah, that's interesting. I know. And about uh, anything else that you notice, I don't know, Indians, Americans that you've worked with. The thing that people in India really, I, they really like to work at night. I don't know why. I mean, like, but is it like night for them? Because obviously yeah, there's a time night, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night for them. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, when I start my day at 8 a.m. Yeah. In India is uh, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. So sometimes I work in the in my midday, mm-hmm. and probably a guy from India comes up and asks me for something new. Mm-hmm. And he told me, hey, it's extremely late there. What mm-hmm. are you working? Oh, because they don't work early. So oh, yeah, it's the oh, interesting okay. Thing there. okay, yeah. So like they, they prefer you know to come in a little bit later, maybe, and then they prefer to work later than to go in super early and leave leave early. Yeah, for sure. I don't know why. But it's okay. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah. the, the, uh, the American people, the people in the United States, I mean, it's, they're really similar to us, I think. To, like to Colombians? Like the mentality? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't feel any yeah, no, big difference really. between, between yeah. us. No, mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, especially with Bogotanos. You know, I like Bogotanos. Bogotanos are kind of easy to, to get along with if you're from Canada, United States. Uh, yeah, it's just capital cities in in Latin America. They're a little bit more cosmopolitan, a little bit more connected to the outside world. So I find it's easier to you know talk to you guys. You don't have to deal with you know Colombians from Barranquilla or Santa Marta, where they think that you're that you're their friends after only one minute of knowing them. So Bogotá is a little bit you know, I guess for other Colombians a lot colder, but in a way gringos are colder, so it's a little bit easier to connect and understand but with animals my personal opinion that's just my hypothesis <laughs> all right well going back now uh, to to the classes uh now for me one of the most difficult things is to describe my methodology because people always ask uh, what is your methodology what do you use so i always ask people when i interview them uh, so in your own words how would you describe the profit kyle methodology so i'm not too sure in one or two senses if somebody like your sister told you you have to tell somebody else, or maybe what you told Javier. How would you describe to somebody like Javier or uh, another friend the profile methodology? Uh yeah. Actually, when I talk with Javier and, and, and another uh, friend that I recommended you is um, it's a real, I mean, a real life experience. I mean, it's a could be 
an informal language, but it's extremely, extremely applied to real life. So that's the that that that's what I like, and that mm -hmm. and that I think is the the difference between your methodology and another one. I mean, because I I look for a lot of possibilities to continue studying English because I don't want I want to improve. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think the 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 way that you did it is extremely friendly with people who want to to learn English to learn English. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I kind of to to make another step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because yeah, the the books are there, the Duolingo is there, but yeah, it's extremely. I mean, you feel like a school, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, in your classes, you feel, uh, and uh, I, I'm not lying. My heart is true. Look like that with a with a friend meeting with a yeah. Uh, so it's it, yeah. it, it, it's awesome. I really enjoy it for sure. Uh, so it's like a, it's a more it's a it's a friendly a friendly atmosphere to look to learn it. More yeah, like. for sure. It's a friendly environment, and the thing uh -huh. is. We don't have homework. Is the best thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no. <laughs> lot, pe people, people ask me if there's homework, and I, I kind of feel yeah. guilty sometimes. Like, am I supposed to give homework? Like, well, even when, I guess maybe it's my history as well. I know when I was in high school and university, I always, I always hated homework. Like, I, I, you know, I come uh -huh. to school, I want to do my work in school. Why do I gotta do extra homework? And so maybe a little bit of that, and also uh, the methodology that is the basis of my methodology, which is called TPRS. Is nobody really mm -hmm. needs to know about it, but it's basically what I base my methodology on. The man who invented it, he basically said, you know, with this methodology, you don't need to give homework to students. They come to class and they learn everything they need to learn in class. So you don't need to give them homework. So maybe that's one reason why I use it. One of the main reasons is because as soon as he said no homework for students, I said, nice. I like that. I don't want to give homework to students. Yeah, it's good. I mean, what better bite that it, that it, mm -hmm. it's mine, yeah, no yeah, homework. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, yeah. Well, <laughs> if, if the teacher gives you homework and then you come to class and you don't do your homework, then you feel really guilty. And oh my goodness, he's going to ask if I did my homework and then you feel shy or you don't want to talk. So, you know, it puts a little bit of extra pressure on you. So, yeah, you guys are busy people. I don't want to give you guys uh, extra. And there are, and there are no grades. You know, that's really grades, cool, yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, for that reason. I told you, I feel in a really, really friendly environment. Just I want to learn and and my me, yeah. I'm my yeah, no. my dream, so it's cool. Yeah, no grades, no homework. Yeah, well, the, that's the thing about languages too. Is like you you learn or you learn, as Cubans like to say, C O C. You're gonna you're gonna learn or you're gonna learn C O C. Yeah, it's a complete anarchy. It's up to you. You want to learn it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's a, a yeah. comment or not. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a little bit of an anarchy. Uh, well, I, actually, because, uh, you know, people on social media, they see me and they think, yeah, people always say, oh, you know, when you do Instagram lives or when you do videos, you, you don't smile enough or you're not very friendly or, you know, the way that you talk to people in private messages isn't very nice. So I, I, I don't know, maybe tell for people who think I'm a, I'm a grumpy person or, uh, you know, or I guess you'd say in Spanish, de mal humor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am, I, am I the same in class or am I different? How would you maybe differentiate how I am on social media compared to how I am in classes? No, it's completely different. I mean, Tali's a really kind person. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's extremely funny, but you, you made a good joke, actually. So mm -hmm. that, that, that really like Probably that's the thing, the the chatting or texting or something like that. Mm -hmm. You actually don't know the tone that the people is put on the words. So yeah, when 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 we talk with you, we we feel the difference, completely the difference. Yeah, so sure. yeah, uh, it's a really yeah, kind person. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, <for sure>. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, well, actually, I think, yeah, that's all the questions I want to ask you about the classes. I'm not too sure. Did, did I miss anything? Was there anything else that you wanted to, to say to the people about how, how I teach or anything else that was interesting about the classes? Yeah, the only thing that I regret uh, mm -hmm. is taking too long to take the classes. I mean, okay. in general, 
in English, in any other language. Yeah, don't hesitate. It's a really good opportunity. The English gave me the opportunity to to get a really, really great job. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that I never can achieve. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, I think it's the better motivation that that that, that you can have. I mean, mm -hmm. get a better job, get a better thing, get a better get a better life quality. Mm -hmm. So, if you are thinking in a start in a start to study English, uh, that's the signal. Mm -hmm. Start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Talking about that quickly, because uh, obviously. You know, people always say that, you know, learning English opens doors and the jobs are more well paid. That, but obviously for many Latinos, Colombians, Mexicans, wherever they're from, sometimes they don't really understand what that means. But you're somebody who's actually experienced it. Uh, so maybe help them visualize, so, you know, compared to the opportunities you would have had if you didn't know English, compared to the opportunities you now have because you know English, you know, how much more are you getting paid? What are the benefits? Be, of having a job where they mostly speak English, like are there more perks? Are the working hours better? The pay is a double? Maybe in concrete words, yeah. Well, what is the point? What is the point of doing all this work? You know, one, two, three years learning English to get you know, as they say, open doors. What what is the open doors for Latinos who don't understand what open doors is? Yeah, for sure. You can. I mean. I passed to receive one offer, one job offer per month mm -hmm. to receive seven, eight per week, mm -hmm. seven job offers. And a lot of them is, oh, we are a, a really good company, a US located. Uh, and even one of them offered me the relocation there to go oh, okay. to Canada. And oh, they, really? yeah. yeah, and they helped me with the paperwork, but actually, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't interested in the job, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm in the IT field that I, that I, that I am right now, yeah. the opportunities, I mean, under the rocks, you can see the opportunities. You open a potato chips and you see a job offer to IT. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, yeah. It, but this is really important. And I, and I know yeah. a lot of people here in Bogota extremely mm -hmm. talented and yeah. with a lot of skills but they, they mm -hmm. can get a job because of, of their english level so mm -hmm. the thing is, believe me yeah. when i told you when the english open doors believe me yeah. open yeah but well, oh, i'm just, i'm just curious myself uh so when you job up so where, where i don't know where do bogotanos or where do colombians if they want to get jobs international jobs is do you guys use a certain website like for, I think for gringos, we call it Indeed. I think Indeed is the biggest website. But I don't know, for somebody in Colombia, like the job op offers, do you find them on Facebook? Do you find them on a special website? Do you find them through an agency? Where where can, once a talented Colombian gets that English level, where, where do they find job offers usually? I think one of the biggest ones to, to, to apply to a better job is LinkedIn. It's, yeah, LinkedIn, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh a really good profile in linkedin yeah the work comes to you you don't need to look for anyone so okay. it's really cool and the and the referral programs i mean uh, now nowadays uh uh some of the biggest company do that i mean they have a referral portal you can refer some uh, someone okay so it's 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 extremely cool so that, yeah basically once you get your foot in the door so i guess in your case I don't know, for you, was it more Avianca or was it more Bavaria that gave you the biggest foot in the door? I think both, but the thing is, uh, in Bavaria, uh, is when, when I started to to work with some English uh, project yeah, English. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I mean, what they, yeah, could be the biggest the biggest job yeah. to 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 get my better job. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so and basically, once you got your foot in the door, once. Basically, everybody knew that you, well, you're, you're a good uh, employee, you're a good worker, oh, and you have yeah. an English level. And actually, ex-colleagues ex yeah. ex -colleagues, uh, called me and say, hey, we have this opportunity. Do you want to apply? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Well, good. Well, that's good. Good information for maybe somebody who's younger, a younger Latino, whoever, wherever they're from, who, yeah, wants to know about what English can do for them. All right, Sergio. Uh, I think so. And I managed to call you Sergio for most of the interview. Yeah. yeah. Only have you at the very beginning. <laughs>
And yeah, I think Javier, we got class today, so I'll probably have to tell Javier about this, and he's going to be laughing. Thank For you. sure. Yeah. Actually, actually, I think he's going to see the interview, so we'll no, see yeah. what happens. No, Javier, okay. if you see the, Javier, if you see this interview. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he'll know what that means. <laughs> right. Well, Sergio, uh, yeah, well, I think you're on lunch break right now, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, I think you said you had two hours. I think you gave me about an hour, hour and a half. So I'll let you enjoy a little bit more of your lunch break. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much for us answering the questions for me. And no, thank you. Thank you. I'm really, I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I, it was a really good experience to your classes and it was a uh, really, really good help to to improve my, my English level uh, to get a better job. Oh, awesome. Yes. Thank you. And I, and I hope I hope he gets more and more opportunities in the future. Either Monica will tell me or you will tell me. Somebody will tell me. Oh, yes. Sergio. He's doing fantastic. Yeah. Because, yeah. Mon I did the interview with Monica, as I told Sergio before we started. And then Monica, after the interview, said, oh, yeah, Sergio, he's doing fantastic. He's doing so great. He's he's at Adidas right now. So hopefully I get, <laughs> hopefully I get more messages like that. All right. Now, for anybody else who is uh, watching the interview, uh, thank you for watching until here. Hopefully, Sergio uh, told you some things that will be helpful for you. I think uh, he said a lot of helpful things. So, Sergio, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day. Great rest of the day for everybody watching this. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, Sergio. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you so much. Good looking, Bye. Argentina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye.